to tell us a little more about how science can help out when our joints don't work like they should anymore, we're joined by an expert in the field, Dr. Markus Heller, an expert for biomechanics. Now, do you think um, engineers today could actually optimize what nature gave us, optimize joints and bones, or is uh, whatever nature came up with is already the perfect design? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, nature had some time to develop these joints, and they're quite sophisticated. Um, and as engineers, I think you have to be humble and to say that you develop something that is better is difficult. But maybe we can help uh, to support the conditions when the structures don't work as they should anymore mm -hmm. in case of an injury or degeneration of the joint. What appears over the years at some point, of course. Exactly. Now, you brought quite a few models here. This is a Yi. Now, which of our joints is actually most exposed to wear and tear over the year? Is it the knee? Well, what we know is from evolution, man decided that he wanted to flex his knee. And uh, because of that, you see that quite a number of structures need to interact mm -hmm. in order to uh, be able to perform that motion. The kneecap, for example, the ligaments, mm -hmm. other structures are important for this motion. It's a complicated joint, actually, and the meniscus is also a spot which uh, gets ruined quite easily. Exactly, and therefore pain quite often occurs there because also an overload can easily happen at these structures. Now what you do in your lab, and we have a few pictures here, is actually measure the forces that appear within the joints. Maybe you could just comment the pictures we exactly. have here. The colleagues uh, try to develop prostheses that are implanted in the joints here at the shoulder, where you can measure the forces during lifting of an object. And what you can see here, uh, by lifting of uh, this water, there's quite some force, but surprisingly, when you just comb your hair, so no external weight, there's a significant uh, force that is acting at the shoulder joint just due to the action of the muscles. So maybe the force when I comb my hair is even bigger than when I lift these bottles? Exactly, that might be even up to two times higher than what uh, you experience during lifting of these bottles. That's amazing. And now you form certain computer simulations with the data you get. Who will profit from them? Exactly. We, what we try to do is we provide, uh, try to provide an understanding of how these structures interact, what forces are there. This is important to guide, for example, surgery. If you want to replace a joint, how to best implant that in order to optimize the function. But also for physiotherapists who need to know for which activities you create certain forces in the structures mm -hmm. to avoid an overload maybe during the rehabilitation mm -hmm. period. So is there something we can do better or worse uh, during our lives? Is it, for example, um, better to do a lot of sports in order to prevent the degeneration of joints? I think what is important is the muscles and, and keeping a balance of the different muscles is really key in order to have uh, balanced loading conditions at the joint and therefore taking care that all your muscles are active and our exercise is certainly an important element. That means we should actually once in a while see a physiotherapist who could tell us, yeah, now you're standing up straight and now you don't. That could really help in order to detect problems early on and to avoid that this actually progresses then into a problem. Thanks a lot for the talk, Dr. Markus Heller. Okay.